Hey, I'm Jeff and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be testing the pH levels of a variety of watering solutions. I feel like I should have one of those lab coats right now just doing a few little experiments. The idea for this video actually stemmed from a conversation I had with Ashley from Gardening in Canada. I was having an issue with one of my pothos on planks here. Some of the leaves were starting to turn just a little bit yellow and I had asked if this is possibly a nutrient issue. She said it's likely a pH issue and not a lack of nutrients. A couple days later she actually made a video on this topic and it is very informative. You should go check that out. I'll leave the link down in the description. Tons of information about the science of pH so I'm not going to get into that but if you have an unbalanced soil pH or if your water is too alkaline or highly acidic you're going to have problems with that nutrient uptake so just go check out her video it is very informative so I'm just going to test a few of the solutions that I use to water my house plants I went out and bought this pH testing kit I'll leave the link down in the description of this video if you want to go check it out it comes with a container for whatever solution you want to test and then the testing solution. So you'll add a couple drops into the container. It will turn a certain color and then you can reference it to the side of the actual bottle to tell you what the pH is. So I'm gonna start off with just regular tap water. So this tap water is actually filter tap water. It is a hard water line as well. And then I added an RV uh, drinking water filter system to that. Uh, have it hooked up to a hose, I can spray off my plants. I'll uh, probably make a video on that down the road. But this is what I would normally just water my plants with regularly. So let's check out the pH. So I'm just going to add, well obviously follow the instructions on the back. I'm just gonna add the three drops to the container. You can see it's already turning a color. I'm gonna put the cap on and just mix it up a little bit. And then you can reference that to the bottle and you can see it is very alkaline. It is around eight. So that is way too alkaline for most houseplants. Uh, according to Ashley, she says the pH uh, for houseplants, most tropical houseplants should be around six to seven. And there's actually a product from Root Farm as well called pH Down. So you add this solution to whichever solution you're using to water your plants and this will lower the pH to the appropriate levels. So I'm gonna actually mix up a little bit of this and see if we can get the uh, pH of just regular uh, filtered tap water down a little bit because this is way too high. If you're not adding fertilizer or anything that uh, typically brings down your pH, this is what you're watering with. Yesterday I filled up this larger spray bottle with the filtered tap water and then I added just a few drops of the pH down and let's test that. So I added a little bit in the container here. Again, I'm gonna add a couple drops. Gonna mix this up. So you can see the pH is drastically lowered. It's around six right now. So this might be a little bit too acidic. It's almost got a little bit of an orange tinge as well. So this is probably in between uh, five and six. So I'd give this a pH of roughly like 5.5 in that range. So this was kind of a big shock to me when I first tested this, knowing that I was uh, daily watering my houseplants, well not all of them daily, but you get what I'm saying, um, watering with a very alkaline water when I should be actually uh, watering with something slightly acidic. Okay, so this is the water and fertilizer mixture. You have to use the correct concentration for whichever product it is that you use, otherwise it's gonna skew the results. So I mixed this up or I pre-mixed it in a uh, container of water and then I added the fertilizer solution. So now let's add a couple drops. And let's check it out. So just the filter tap water and fertilizer, it is definitely quite acidic. So this is perfect for watering your houseplants. You can see it's a little bit more on kind of the green yellow. So it's perfect right now at around 6.5 for pH. Okay, so next I'm going to try the coffee and water mixture. This is roughly like half and half. So this is cold coffee with filtered tap water. Now I've never actually tested this, so I'm really curious to see how much it actually lowers it and how acidic it actually is. And of course there is no cream or sugar in this. I just want to say that it is just straight coffee and water. Okay, so let's add the solution. And mix it up. Well, um, I didn't really know, maybe I have to add some more. I think it needs maybe a few more drops to get rid of the coffee color. Okay, so I'm gonna say this is inconclusive because of the color of the coffee, which is kind of surprising. I thought it would change. 
or maybe it is super acidic, like four or lower. I'm not too sure if it changed or not. So uh, it may be just super acidic, like lower than four, or it may have just kept the color of the coffee. It still looks like coffee, maybe with a slight yellow tinge to it. So I'm gonna say inconclusive or super acidic. I'm not too sure. Maybe I added too much coffee. I'm going to run back upstairs, grab just a small little bit of coffee, maybe not half and half, uh, maybe a quarter of coffee and then the rest water. I'm gonna try that. Okay, so I added a very small amount to the bottom. And again, uh, just use that filter top water. I'm gonna use five drops. One, two, three, four, five. So this is kind of a little bit orange, maybe a light orange, still coffee color. Let me know what you think down in the comment section about this uh, little coffee experiment and what you think the results are. Okay, the next one is actually snow. So you often hear that rainwater is probably the best water that you can use for your houseplants. So I went out and collected uh, some snow because obviously um, it's not raining today, it's middle of winter. So I went out and collected a little bit of snow off of my deck. So it's not contaminated with any dog urine or <laughs> anything like that. This is a fresh sample off of my uh, table that I have on my deck and it's been uh, obviously melting. So I'm just gonna collect a little bit of the water, dump out a little bit so that it's half in the container, so something like that. And then let's test the solution. So I'm guessing uh, before I even put this in, it's gonna be uh, not as alkaline as tap water. I'm thinking it's probably gonna be around the 6.5 to 7. Okay, well, interesting, because it is slightly green. A little bit of yellow, so that is pretty much, well, it's pretty much exactly at 6.5. So it is true, if you use rainwater or even snow, you are getting a lower pH. This is optimal, uh, 6.5. This is perfect for plant growth, this is awesome. Um, I didn't realize that there was such a difference between using filtered tap water and using rain or snow. Super interesting. So one of the solutions that you can bring down or lower pH with watering your houseplants is actually white vinegar. I just added a small amount to the, like basically a few drops. I'm gonna add some filtered tap water. Now you can go check out online the uh, varying concentrations that you should be using. Um, I think it's like one cup for every gallon. I don't even know how much a gallon is. I think that's like maybe four or five liters. So um, the, the concentration does vary when you're looking it up. So just do a little bit of research just so you can see or know how much you should be adding so you're not killing your plants or making it too acidic. Um, I don't know what the concentration is equivalent to with a small container, but I'm just going to add some filter tap water and see what we have. So just a tiny little bit in the bottom and uh, yeah, we'll check it out. Okay, so I filled this one fairly close to the top. I'm gonna add probably three or four drops to this. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna add five. It turned red this time. Ooh. Okay, just a, like, <laughs> okay, this is very, very acidic. Um, so yeah, obviously my concentration was off. I'm gonna do this again, basically with one drop of <laughs> vinegar. This basically turned red. Whoops, it's off the scales. It's probably a pH of like three, I would guess. So this is, a uh, pH of four is orange. This is like red, so way too acidic with this concentration. I'm gonna do it again with one drop. Okay, I added way less vinegar, basically like a drop. So let's see if that has any effect. Nope. <laughs> Still super acidic. Okay, I went and did a little bit of research about the concentration to be used for the vinegar and water, and I found quite a nice chart online. And of course, the more vinegar that you use, the lower the pH will be. So for a four liter jug, it says to use one tablespoon, and that's roughly about 10, uh, maybe a little bit more mils of the white vinegar. So I'm just gonna pour that in to the filtered water, and then I'm gonna mix it up. I'm just gonna shake it up a little bit, and then I'll put a little bit in the test container. Okay, now I just add 
the solution in here again and see if we get a different result this time. It's not red, so that's good. I'm just gonna shake that up. You can see it's a pH of about six, maybe a little bit lower than that. So it's in the ranges of, I would say like maybe 5.5. So this is much better, or this is a much better result than the last time where it basically turned orange. I actually went and tested coffee again with kind of similar results just because I don't know if it's the color of the coffee or what, but um, it really didn't change color. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of leaving coffee as inconclusive, but obviously if you have the vinegar at the right concentration, it can lower your pH effectively as well. And there's also a pH up from Root Farm if you need to raise your pH if it's too acidic and you need it in, in the ranges of that 6.5. So that was actually some pretty interesting results with all the different solutions that I have. I love doing these types of experiments and how I can manipulate my plants to grow better. What I actually should have done is compared the filter tap water with the rain and snow water first just to show which one is better. So hopefully you made it to the end of the video and you can see the comparison between uh, tap water and uh, the snow. So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. Otherwise, if you are wanting to watch another houseplant video, click this one right here. Thanks again for watching, bye.